Ah. Uh, but I don't know. We haven't made that many choices to go with Emmy. We're we're over in Lily Hanako territory, I'm sure. We can go for it. What am I doing here? Am I really just gonna fold and let Emmy pull ahead? I speed up. Second left done quickly. Without even considering it, I keep going. Emmy looks back at my shoulder at me and grins. Still going? When <laughs> want you. Don't think I'm out of, of shape. <laughs> Emmy laughs without breaking her stride no less and speeds up even more. Well, if this is the way we're gonna play things, I increase my own pace as well. I can feel my lungs burning. And my legs are starting to question just what the hell I'm doing. Lactic acid screams in my muscles, but I close my ears. I can't let myself fall behind because that would be a loss. The rational voice in my head inquires mildly just when we started playing a game. I'd answer it, but I'm having a lot of trouble thinking at present. She's so fast. How the hell does she keep it? <sighs> it's like a string pulling at my chest. A choking feeling of narrowness and pain. Before I can think of anything else, then oh shit! The track disappears from under my feet. I stumble on one hand, shooting the clutch of my chest. The other hitting the track to keep me from falling on my face. Emmy whirls around and her eyes widen. It's so! She yells at me, sprinting from the other side of the track. What's wrong? N nothing. It just <sighs> keep your breathing steady. Calm down. Don't panic. Don't panic. Do you need me to get the nurse? I close my eyes, shutting out the outside world. My heart struggles to regain its rhythm. Slowly, the pain in my chest begins to subside. Soon it's gone like nothing happened. There was... There's nothing? No, something happened there. I open my eyes again and glance at a very worried Emmy. I think I'm fine. My voice suddenly sounds weird even to myself. Oddly even, a matter of fact. It makes Emmy frown. I don't think you are. She seems to come to a decision and nods to herself. Right, you're coming with me. You've got to see the nurse. Emmy grabs my arm and drags me up. I feel a bit wobbly, but I refuse the shoulder Emmy offers for support. Honestly, I'm a little ashamed of my own weakness. I'd really rather not have Emmy concerned about me, but it seems to be too late. Heck, I'd really rather not have anyone concerned about my condition, though at this point, it seems to be too late for that as well. I'd like to be able to deal with things the whole... I like to be able to deal with the whole thing on my own, without being a bother to anyone else. While I'm wishing for things, I'd rather not have this condition in the first place. Nurse! And he crashes into his office without knocking, but it doesn't alarm the nurse in the least. Good morning, Sunshine. What's up? Sunshine. Anyway, he calmly sips from his coffee mug, but lays it down after following Emmy's gaze to me, looming in the doorway. His cell. What brings you here? We were running, and he stumbled over, and started grabbing at his chest, and I thought I should come get you, and I... Easy there, Emmy. Calm down. You saw what happened. I don't know. We were running, and then my chest started hurting like that time before, but it went away after a few seconds. There's just a flutter or something. There's frowns, as if to say that just a flutter is some kind of oxymoron. <sighs> I didn't mean quite this when I suggested to get some exercise. You've got to be more careful, so I was being careful, I just... Come to think of it. I just got into a rage with a member of the track team doesn't seem as well reasoned as I thought it would. You just what? Uh, that is... I was racing Emmy. Emmy? Is this true? Emmy fidgets, looking adorably contrite. Um, well... Finally, she can't seem to bring herself to say it aloud. Emily nods. Then this nurse sighs and rubs at his forehead with one hand entirely. Emmy, you've got to be more sensitive to the limits of others. I don't know if each... I don't know if he told you, but his son has a bad heart, and getting him to race you was incredibly irresponsible. Uh, actually, I started it. The nurse is stunned by my statement. You what? We were just running, and, and we started to pull away, so I uh, sped up to catch her. The nurse stares at the ceiling, muttering her prayer for patience to some god or another. It looks, bound, it looks back down at the both of us. So you're both stupid. That's a comfort, I guess. Now, come on, Asal. I've got to make sure your heart's not going to explode or something. I do little. I do fully. I dutifully obey and follow him to the adjacent room, where we are certain that I am, in fact, not going to keel over and die. So, how does it feel? I don't know. Nothing much. I'm tired, but it might just be from the exercise. You should stay here for a few hours and rest. We'll see how you feel after that. I'm not going to object, so I lie down on the infirmary bed. Have I chosen the wrong path already? I don't know. A thoroughly miserable Emmy comes in after getting an earful from the nurse in the other room. I couldn't hear what he said through the closed door, but I'm sure it wasn't pleasantries. 
Look, I'm really, really sorry. I should have been more careful. Hey, you didn't know. It's not your fault. She looks awfully down and sorry, and my reassurances don't do much to cheer her up. I want to make it up to you. Again with that decisive nod. So, you have to come to lunch with me. I'll bring it for you, okay? Something really, really good. I start with a, you don't have to, but then shut up and just nod at her when I see her face. Good. We meet at the roof. We? Yep, the weather's nice now, so the roof's a great spot for lunch, you know. I see. You'll come, right? You won't deny me the chance to make it up for you? Of course not. Great, see you there. I guess I'm going to the roof. I stay afloat somewhere between asleep and awake, feeling completely drained. Not only my body, but all of me is limp and paralyzed, apart from my senses. I swallow with difficulty and then try to lie as still as I can, which in this state is not a very hard thing to do. The nurse is shuffling around on the other side of the curtains as she drew to give me some privacy. I can see a shadow shifting by in the sunlight. He has opened the window of his office. It's windy outside. The clean white curtains flutter in the breeze in a heavy, lazy motion, like waves. Light sifts through them slowly, half absorbing into the fabric. All right, I guess we're gonna sleep for a little while. I close my eyes. The breeze on my face feels like the soft fabric of the curtains. I listen to the sound of my heartbeat for a moment, trying to shut out the sound of the nurse tapping away on his computer and my own heavy breathing. It's steady. Damn it. Not even a week and I end up like this again. I really screwed up this time. Should've known better than to play the half-baked sports star in front of a real one. I might even try to act brave. Like that heart fellow was no big deal, even when it was obvious that it was. It was just a reflex to push it away to keep it inside. I didn't want it to happen. I didn't want Emmy to see it. Ah, stupid, stupid, stupid. I have to be more careful. I'll end up in the hospital again or worse. That's my final thought before I give in to the tiredness. Good job, Asao. I fell asleep. For how long? What time is it? I'm feeling a little lightheaded and I keep blinking impulsively. Pushing the curtain aside, I squint my eyes against the unfiltered light pouring in from the window. The texture of the canvas feels nothing like the one did before. Alright, so we gotta go to the roof, Asao. Gotta get to the roof. And stop worrying about your heart so much. I mean, okay, worry about it and stop being so stupid. I know, I'm the one making, making these decisions, but stop being so stupid, alright? You could have given up a little bit. Nurse looks up from his work, sitting exactly where he was before. How are you feeling? I can't really tell, so I don't answer anything. I'm feeling kind of groggy from falling asleep at such a weird time. Hopefully I don't look too weird. What time is it? Me croaking the question to gain some orientation. The nurk. Nurse. The nurk. The nurk. The nurk. You're a nurk. Nurk. The nurse looking at his voice wristwatch before answering. Things seem to happen in slow motion. Mmm, quarter past ten. I try to think for a moment what that means, but I'm not really sure. You didn't answer my question, so. Oh, fine. Climb down from the bed, then. And let's see how you're doing. Don't... I try to do exactly that. I want to just sway dizzily when I move too fast. The nurse moves to swarm me by an arm in size. <sighs> Stand up too quickly, is what I was going to say. Just sit there. I'll check your pressure to make sure. My good intentions sure lasted for a long time. <sighs> I shut up, embarrassed, with myself. While the nurse gets busy with an old-fashioned contraption in, uh, in my arm. After a couple of minutes, he puts it away, looking neither pleased nor unhappy. Mm, you're alright. Head stop spinning? Yeah. Good. And how are the contents doing? You didn't show very good judgment out there, so. I swallowed the retort I was going to make. It's what I was thinking to myself, but hearing it stayed by somebody else is what makes you want to protest. What he's saying is not pleasant to hear. It doesn't make him any less right. No, sir. He nods, still looking as neutral as he was before. It'd be easy to be angry with him if he said, I told you so, or something. But he doesn't. Mm, I can try and help you to keep your health, but ultimately, the last call lies with you. Hopefully this little episode will be something to remind you of that. Here, a note for you, teacher. Do avoid an interrogation. I take the slip of paper he's offering, and then make my leave as I can't think of anything else to say. No, I even really want to. Stay out of trouble, you hear me? I don't think it was anything but a scare, but next time could be different. I hear you. There's some way to get to the school building straight from the auxiliary building, but I'm not keen to find out and possibly get lost, so I go from the exit that I know how it works. Okay, so they are connected. I stop at the stairs of the auxiliary building, deliberating for a moment between going to the dorms to get my books and stuff and going straight away to class. The sun stings in my eyes, so I head towards the dorms. So we're going to be a little late. I don't know when class starts. Apparently past 10. Or maybe class has already started, I don't know. The halls are quiet as the courtyard was. Naturally so, since everyone is in class. I knock lightly at the door of 3-3 and push open the door when Muto calls from the other side. Sorry I'm late. Fifteen pairs of eyes turn to me. Good morning, Nakai. 
Mutes seems to be somewhat confounded by my coming in late, as if interrupted by his flow or something. Judging from the rambling lectures his classes tend to be, that might be the case. A passing the note nurse gives me. Muto takes it with a nod and leaves it quickly. He lifts his eyebrows and gives me a kind of stern look, but doesn't say anything. Just nods solemnly again. And I sure again he gestures me to get run along, so I naturally do. Great. Class goes on lazily. I think I'm starting to get into the rhythm of the school. They can stop worrying about taking notes and being overly attentive. The first days I was pretty high strung in class. Muto finishes his lecture and uh, well, lectures three early, but continues without a pause about that festival. So, as you know, the festival's on the way up day after tomorrow. I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Have a good time, but also come Sunday, please remember the meaning of this festival in your minds. Games and fried food! Everyone burst out in laughter. So do I. Yes, thank you, Mikado. But what I mean was more the... The remainder of a sentence is buried beneath the ring of the lunch bells, and everyone starts packing up their things. Muto deliberates for a moment, but since almost nobody seems to pay attention anymore, he gives up and sits down. I kinda wanna know what this festival is about, but whatever. It's crowded in the hallway, or as crowded as hallways in the school probably get. Most of the students seem to be heading most of the students seem to be heading down for the cafeteria. Normally I'd join the flow and grab a lunch myself. But today is different. Today, I've been invited to lunch on the roof. An odd location, but that's where I was told to go. Fortunately I managed to find shelter from the storm and leave the classroom door. Eventually the torrent subsides and I step tentatively out into the hallway. Only to be met by Emmy, who comes flouncing down the hallway like a cannonball. Hey! Hi, Hiso! Great timing! Hi, you're actually in your uniform. I have super extra lunch today! As promised, let's go upstairs! The stairway's roof is a little dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. At the top of the stairs is a door, complete with a missing padlock. I wonder who the intrepid individual was that removed the lock. Hmm. And we shoves the door open and steps beaming into the sunlight. Suddenly, a tall, dark stranger appears out of nowhere. Standing imposedly in front of us, and he flinches back, almost falling da back down the stairs. Eek! Hello? Yipes! You scared me, Rin! Wait, isn't she... Hello? Noticing that Rin is speaking to me, Emmy looks curiously at me. You two know each other? I look confusedly at Emmy. She's that friend of yours? Rin has turned her gaze towards the clouds drifting above the school. I didn't know you knew this person, Emmy. Wow! The awkward silence lasts only a few seconds until Lemmy and- Lemmy! Lemmy! You are now a Lemmy! Let's out a tiny giggle, shrugging the coincidence off. I invited himself for lunch! If you know him, that's just better! Oh? Does this mean I don't get food? Or did you invite him for lunch without the lunch? Er, uh, neither. I have food for three! Nice thinking. They walk to the other end of the roof while I stay at the clock tower for a while, taking in the atmosphere. There's nobody else but us here. I guess the roof is not as popular as it is in the other schools. A few run-down benches and tables are scattered around the edges. I, I don't see any, but okay. Perhaps in an attempt to make the rooftop look less desolate. But didn't you just say that there was a padlock, which means people aren't supposed to be up here in the first place? Unless Emmy and Rin brought them up here. The small pebbles covering the roof right up beneath our feet. I peek through the chain link fence to take a look at the school grounds and beyond. Students are strolling in pairs and groups around the quadrangle and at the cafeteria. A few delivery trucks are passing the school towards the convenience store nearby. Somewhere, a watchdog barks at a passerby. Somehow, when I look towards the town center, the small town feel strikes me very strongly, almost palpably. The hectic lifestyle of big metropolises seems so far away and foreign here. Nobody has to run and catch a bus like their life depended on it or get their senses overloaded by the neon lights and traffic jams. I feel surprisingly optimistic about this new life of mine. Look at my new hometown, even if it's going to be mine for only one short year. Finding about my illness and not having to move away from home all came so suddenly that I haven't had the time to think about how I feel about it. When I step out of the shadow of the clock tower to the open, I feel the warmth of touching my back. The sun shines from a perfectly clear cerulean sky. This is not perfectly clear at all, but I guess it's partially cloudy. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries the scent of trees and flowers, not smog and car exhaust like it used to just a few weeks ago. Emmy settles on a branch, with Rin in tow, and produces one big and two small lunchboxes from her bag. Come on, Isel, what are you waiting for? She's beckoning me to join them, making room on the already small bench. <laughs> I see myself on the corner of the bench, to take as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Impressive view. Emmy suppresses a giggle, and places the lunchbox in front of Rin, and hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go, lunch as promised. Oh, made no less, I'm impressed. Oh, wow, this looks really good. Thanks, I'm making myself when I can. Conversation dies off. 
Conversation dies off as I set about the business of feeding myself. Taking a few bites, I glance up and notice Rin deftly opening the lunchbox and popping a fork full of food in his mouth, using only her feet. Even though I've seen her do it before, I can't help but be impressed at her dexterity. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I'm in right now. Will I ever get used to sights such as this? We're trying to, Hisao, if you would stop bringing them up! I can't decide if getting used to such a thing would be a good or a bad thing. Good! Clearly good, considering we're going to be in this class for this school for a whole year. At least less than a year? I don't know how long we're going to be here. We transfer in like half the year, right? Does getting used to this place mean I'm giving up on being a normal person? They're all normal! Or does it just mean I'm becoming more understanding about those around me? Yes, that one. That one. I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into the lunch as if it had insulted her ancestors. You seem pretty hungry. Emmy looks up, mouth half full, and smiles before nodding. My morning run always works up an appetite. Which is great, because then I burn through lunch pretty quickly. Helps me keep my girlish figure. What would happen if you'd lose it? Would you become a man? <laughs> I, very, I very nearly choke on my lunch trying not to laugh. It's a figure of speech. Mm. Does your figure have to run in the mornings too? Do you always talk like this? Like, like what? what? I think that answers my question. Never mind. So, uh, I struggle with the thing of small talk and sit on the obvious question. How do you two meet? Rin seems content to let Emmy answer this question. <laughs> Someone in the housing department thought we'd compliment each other well, so we were assigned rooms next to one another. Compliment each other? Like shoes in a suit? Huh? <laughs> Emmy giggles at my confusion. Put us together, and we've got all our limbs, get it? Ah. So, I started helping Rin get ready in the mornings, and that was that. I mean... I mean, you can't help someone get dressed every morning and not get along. I see. Rin chooses this moment to interject. I have trouble with shirts. Right, that seems fairly obvious. Really? Kind of? This isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. That, combined with the fact that Rin is generally curious, makes me feel slightly better and yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms. So, uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be difficult. You know, I'm just gonna stop talking now. It'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. Brynn nods in what I suspect is meant to be a sage manner. Are you, like, always stoned or something? <laughs> I'm sorry, Rin, but... Hmm, I see. The conversation dies as I turn my attention back to my lunch. It's really quite good. When he finishes her lunch first, he makes a contented noise. Ah, that was good! When she busies herself with cleaning up her lunch, Rin speaks up. I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that, sorry! With a flourish, she reaches into her bag and removes a trio of juice boxes. She tosses me one. That appears to be cranberry juice. One to Rin that appears to be some kind of strawberry milk, complete with pink color scheme, and keeps an equally pink box of some kind of fruit punch to herself. Rin dexterously stabs her straw through the top of her lunch bags and begins to drink. I am once again impressed by how flexible she is, but this time I keep my comment to myself. You kept it to yourself last time. Somehow, I don't think either Rin... Mm. Somehow, I don't think Emmy or Rin are the sorts of people who would think twice about the way they work around their particular disabilities. Well, Emmy doesn't really seem to have a problem. She has legs, I mean, Rin especially so. Indeed, she gives off the impression of being entirely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. Whether or not that's a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not sure. So, Hisao, how do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice, actually. I like high places for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for the lunch, too. Emmy grins a thousand watt grin. Please, my response, I suppose. No problem! Feel free to eat with us next time, okay, too? Mm. I won't make you lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service? I don't know. Emmy looks mock offended. Trying to take advantage of my good nature? The nerve! She giggles. Well, if that's your answer, I guess Rin and I will just keep eating lunch all alone. I am suddenly assaulted by the most heart-running puppy dog eyes I've ever seen as Emmy pouts. I'm kidding, I was kidding. I'd love to eat lunch up here again. Good location, and the company's okay too. Emmy frowns a bit in my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted her invitation. I guess I make it a friend now. Friends now. Or at least acquaintances. Ah, <sighs> so... We're not really friends with Shizune and Misha anymore, they kind of hate me. <laughs> um, we're friends with Lily and Hanako, kind of, and we're friends with these two now. Cool. The lunch bell rings, signaling a return downstairs. Rin, you didn't finish your lunch again. No, I wasn't that hungry. 
If you don't eat more, you're gonna fade away. Rin shrugs, as if this is an acceptable risk. Come on, we better get going. Three of us head down the stairs together. So what classes do you two have? I assume there's only four classrooms up here. Uh, you know, on this on this floor. And you, I'm assuming you're third year's kid, not second year or first year's. I don't know, though. The afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself without a plan for something to do after school. So I head to the library to return a couple of the books I finished reading. Walking inside, I see that there are about as many students here as there were Tuesday. All the more evident from the almost total silence enveloping the room. As I drop the books I borrowed into the return slots in the counter, you go suddenly pops open from behind it. Quite startled from the banging they make as they hit the trolley next door. Ah, sorry, Yuko, I didn't mean to startle you. No, no, that's fine. It happens a lot. I'm used to it by now. Um, can I help you? It's okay. I think I know where everything is. Thanks anyway. I suppose I'll grab another book or two while I'm here. There's not much else to do. And after reading so much during my stay in the hospital, it's become a hard habit to break. I wander down to the fiction section, towards the back of the library, scanning the bookshelves for anything that catches my eye. <sighs> As I do, I look over to the corner where Hanukkah had been the last time I was here, not really expecting anything to come of it. But, surprisingly, she's there. Absorbed completely in a fairly thick book. I decide against intruding on her leg last time and get back to finding reading material. Aw, fine. After an indiscernible amount of time spent pursuing the aisles, I finally decide on a couple books to get and slide them off the shelf. With the minimum of us, I quickly walk over to the counter, check out my books, and pop them into my bag as I walk out. By the time I leave the main building, sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remains, but the majority have left, presumably to their homes and dorms. Feeling utterly drained, I head to my room and read the books I borrowed. There's been enough action and excitement for one day already. The first is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I know the story, of course, but I've never actually read the original book. It's just as trivial as I remember the story to be, with the wacky characters and nonsense plot. I start thinking of myself as some kind of an Alice too, happily see tumbling down the rabbit hole into this crippled wonderland. Wow. Yeah, okay, that's a rather strong expression. So the isolated location, the overway the school accommodates to absolutely everything is unsettling. It is like another world. Sure, but it's not a bad world. Or a mad world. I wonder why I can't shake the feeling of being an outsider like Alice, despite most of everyone being so hospitable and friendly with me. Turning another page, my mind starts drifting further away from the book. It's quiet. I can hear my heartbeat thumping against the fabric of my shirt. For some reason, it makes me feel really bad, like it has since that time in that forest with Hanukkah, with Iwanako. Like, I was locked into a cage with something nasty and scary. Eh. I put the book down for a while and stare at the ceiling, taking my time to shake off the feeling. I'm supposed to do homework and, you know, have pills and stuff. 200 pages later, I fall asleep. Wow, that was fast. Could never read that fast. Maybe I could if I tried. I don't know.